if you've been collecting a lot of keyboards and other music kit over the last few years, like me, you will find that at some point you get fed up with patching and repatching MIDI cables. At which point you're going to start thinking about buying something like this. Now this is an 8x8 USB MIDI adapter. By and large it's pretty good. Price is good and it's got a lot of facilities and it works. But when I first got this it didn't work as well as I thought and I actually was at the point of thinking this just doesn't work properly, it's not reliable. And the really reason I thought it was unreliable is because I didn't realise that you have to turn things on in a particular order for this to work. So I'm going to have a quick look at that and hopefully sort that problem out for you at the same time. So just a quick overview then. Um, the unit's a standard 1U 19 inch rack configuration. You have eight MIDI ins and eight MIDI outs. One MIDI in and one MIDI out is on the front panel and the rest are on the back. It also can um, do SMPT synchronization, um, which may be of use to some of you. And it has various modes of communication. So USB is pretty much what people are going to use these days, but it has dedicated PC and Mac functionality as well. In terms of drivers, um, although the drivers are quite old, they do work perfectly well on Windows 10. I can't say so much for the Mac. It's not my area. Okay, so let's check out the prices of this unit. £100. That's, I think, the cost I got it for a couple of years ago. But I notice it is certainly getting a lot cheaper. 49 yeah. That seems more reasonable these days. 37. These are more expensive. They are a bit selling for that. But look at this. Somebody managed to get it for £11.50. Isn't that incredible? Um, for Americans, think pounds for dollars. And you shouldn't be far off the price. You'll probably get them much cheaper over there, actually. Um, actually, some of these are American prices. So maybe it's kind of similar. But there's definitely some opportunities to pick up this unit for almost nothing. I mean, £11.50. I wonder if that one was broken. It says brand new. I mean, that's amazing. So, uh, yeah, it's a good option. So I've just come into my studio and I've turned on the power to all the synths that I want to use. And that includes the MIDI interface that we're talking about. And now I've turned on my computer. Let's have a look at the lights on the box. I turned the MIDI sport on first. I've now turned the computer on and you can see there's uh, USB flashing. Now I'm going to turn on the door and then let's see how the connectivity works. Now let's just double check the MIDI settings on this. To go into preferences, devices, and then you've got the list of all the devices. And as you can see, the 8 times 8 is in here. So I'm using the CZ1 as a controller keyboard. And as you can see, it is turned on. And if I press a note, you can see that the uh, MIDI interface is receiving MIDI on channel 1. OK, so that's, that's working. Meanwhile, over here, on this channel, we have this setup, MIDI channel one. I've even put it on Omni, but we can put it on channel one, which should be, let's have a look. Yeah, channel one over here, channel one there. And this indicates that MIDI should just go straight through. So we should see MIDI information. We wouldn't necessarily hear anything because this isn't actually an effect. You're probably familiar with it. Um, but as we can see, nothing is coming through. So how do you do this? How do you get around this problem? Very straightforward. You need to turn the computer on first. Um, now, if you've done it in the wrong order, it's not a problem. You have to restart the cycle. So if I go over here, the power button is there. 
turn it off, turn it back on. It will then do its USB checks and you will see the USB is still flashing. Um, so there was no really an indicator that there was a problem on this box before. It looks exactly the same, but that has reset now. Uh, meanwhile, over on the door, we have the computer up, but we don't have the door software up. That's important. So then we have to start the door. Okay. Notice the difference. We now have MIDI coming in. So if you've bought one of these and then you've been kicking yourself thinking this is really unreliable, it's just because you've got to do it in the right order. It's a bit of a pain. It's a good chance you've already worked this out anyway, but it took me a while. It's not the most logical order. So I'll just put it up on the screen again then. So first of all, you have to turn the computer on. Then you turn the MIDI interface on and then you turn your door on. Obviously all the settings have to be right as well. This may be specific to Cakewalk. I don't have any other doors to play with. So if you're having the same problem, that's what you should look out for. Am I turning these things on in the right order? Okay, so hopefully that has been useful and will help you out and save yourself a bit of frustration. If you found that tip useful, then please feel free to leave a like and consider subscribing. I'm going to try and uh, put up more of this sort of thing as time goes on. So until next time, thanks very much for watching. Bye.